So this here is the Smooth Q. It's a new mobile gimbal from Xiyong. And I reviewed last year the Smooth C. And it was pretty good. This is a decent gimbal. So this one, apparently the improved version, now will give us up to 11 hours of battery life. And that battery pack in it can actually be doubled up to be used as a portable power pack. Charging a mobile phone, you can also attach accessories now. So that means you can put on an external microphone and you can also put on those lens attachments and things like that. It also works in portrait mode. So let's take a look at it now, get this one unboxed, compare it to the Smooth C, and I will also go out in town and get some test footage with this to see just how well it works and if indeed it is better than the Smooth C. The retail box here is the Chinese one. There was no English in stock, but this didn't really bother me because I think it's pretty straightforward on how to use this. Okay, so it actually comes in this case, which is good, like a soft case to protect it. And here we have a little strap that must be just for the case there. Yeah, so you can sling that over your shoulder, of course and carry it around with you without the need of a backpack. Other accessories, we have a micro USB cable. Okay, so that's nicely packaged in there. I can see that it's got a form to it, so that should give it pretty good protection in there. Now, I can see already that the build quality, it actually feels definitely lighter, but it looks a little bit more plasticky compared to my Smooth C. And we've got the typical joystick there you can see so different modes on here now this one here is for the application which currently i don't think is out yet or at least not in english i'll have to have a follow-up video for the application of that but that's your focus controls for that and recording with the application so that's the power on you can turn that on your different modes and of course then the joystick there for your pan and tilt on the left here there's a micro usb in that's to charge it obviously and down the bottom, there's a quarter inch thread so you can connect this up to a tripod. Just turn this around and you see here is a full size USB. That will be to charge your devices when you use this like a battery pack. Now here's the last gen gimbal, which you can see doesn't come with a hard case, which was a slight annoyance, but it didn't really bother me too much because I normally actually just put it in this box to transport it around. But this one has the removable battery, so you always have to put the batteries into the base of this. But quality wise, I'm going to say that I think this definitely has a better build to it. I do like it because this is all mostly all metal, apart from you could say, yeah, the joystick, yeah, that's plastic. And we still have the thread on the bottom. But of course, battery capacity wise, this one is just so much larger there. 11 hours or 12 hours, I think it is, versus around three to four on this one. And you can see this one also, you need to screw on a counterweight onto the end of this. There is no counterweight needed now for larger mobile phones on the Smooth Q. Getting started here, you just need to slot your mobile phone in. First, I'm gonna try the largest I have, which is a Mi Max, this is 6.4 inches. Get the slotted in, screen facing towards you, and whoa, that is just fitting in there. Now, if I had a case on this, that is not gonna fit. So you need to push that right into the end. Okay, so I just had to balance it first, which I didn't do in the start. And what that involves is just adjusting this right here. So all I had to do was just slide that out. And now it balanced, turned it on. You can see that it's handling this just fine. This is a rather heavy, large mobile phone, the Xiaomi Mi Max. And right now it's just in that pan mode. So I can control the tilt up and down. And if I hit the mode button again, I think this is the, there we go, the left and right pan. Now, the slower you do that, the more you can move. So that actually gives me full adjustment there, up and down, left and right, controlling it. And the next mode, I think, is the follow mode, they call it, which will lock the camera in that position, which is very handy. So now if my hand moves around, sorry, this is the next mode. There we go. So whatever I'm doing, it keeps the camera in that same position. So as you can see, my hand's moving there left and right. The mobile phone is still pointing straight ahead where I want it. No matter if I'm walking around, moving, you can see that's pretty good there, keeping that steady. Okay, so now I'm really pushing it. I've put an external mic on here. This is very heavy and I doubt it's gonna be able to do this, but let's test it out. Okay, that's powered on. Oh, no. See, that's not gonna work. That's just, that it seems is 
no, that's just too heavy. That's not going to work. So I think you remove that. You see now it's corrected itself there. So I guess with the accessories, it's only going to work on certain mobiles, ones that aren't large and heavy like this one. This looks a bit ridiculous, but I did manage to put on the Rode GoMic. It's an external microphone that I showed you before on the Galaxy S7, but I can only have it facing that way because of the way it is. The design of the Galaxy S7 only, of course, has the port at the bottom. If the port was at the top, we might be able to get better uses with it, but since it's at the bottom, that's as good as I can get. It looks really ridiculous and kind of blocks the screen there, so it might be hard to actually hit the record button on my mobile phone. Now I've moved the phone back now, rebalanced it, because I've plugged in the charger here. So the charger plugged into the bottom of the grip. It is now charging my Galaxy S7 here, and it's still working just fine, you can see. So that feature does work, and that could be handy if you're running low on battery power on your phone, then you can keep shooting and keep going with this. So yes, portrait mode is possible as you can see. All you need to do is undo the dial on the back of the mount, flip it around into portrait mode, and then reinsert your phone there and it works perfectly fine. The same exact stabilization and the modes of course apply. So let's take a look at the weight of them. This is the Smooth Q, the new model. 450 grams. Remember it does have a larger battery in there. And then the old model, which is 396 grams. So the newer one is 50 grams more heavy, but I guess because it has that extra battery in there that it's a worthwhile trade-off there. So now I wanted to test out the Smooth Q up against last year's version, the Smooth C. And I'm just gonna show you quick footage here walking up these stairs. And I can't really honestly tell a difference between both of these when it comes to the stability. To me, they look more or less the same. Now I'm using my Galaxy S7, which of course has optical image stabilization. It's in the follow mode. Sorry, they're fixed mode, so it's fixed to the same position ahead. And I'm just walking at the moment, and I'm gonna do a short jog and we'll see how it handles it. Now I'm gonna try a little left to right pan. There we go, That's too fast though, Zed. About there, you just need to ease back, so it takes a lot actually to get used to how to do this because the joystick is so sensitive, as mentioned. One other way to get nicer looking pans, I think, is if you're not happy with that joystick, is to simply rotate your wrist very, very slowly and see if then you can get a nice, steady pan, like I'm doing now. I'm back in the fixed mode again, pointing at the castle tower there. I'm just walking along. So you can get some interesting side-on shots using this fixed mode. I prefer this mode actually because I like it that it faces in that same direction. It allows you to do some interesting shots. Now look at how it stabilizes without optical image stabilization because this is now the front facing camera on the Galaxy S7 which doesn't have optical stabilization of course. You see it's doing a good job. So I'm just walking up on something at the moment, I'm going to jump off and see how it handles that. Uh, it didn't seem to be too bad at all so stability so far seems Really quite good for people that want to do these selfie kind of shots. Walk along holding a gimbal. This looks ideal so far. Now this is being shot on my Mi Max. It doesn't have optical image stabilization or digital. Standard camera, 16 megapixels, f2.0 aperture. And you see walking along that it's doing a reasonably good job here. Now if I run a little, Even that doesn't seem too bad. Okay guys, so that's the review there. Now the gimbal itself I think is better than the Smooth C for various reasons. The grip feels more comfortable. It's a little bit larger. Yes, it's plasticky so it doesn't have, I wouldn't say quality feel to it, a cheaper feel to it because the other one's metal. But we get all that extra battery life and it can handle large phones here, like my Xiaomi Mi Max, without any problems. But when I put the accessories on here, I put that microphone 
on the end, that was just too heavy causing the whole thing to slump down. So you need to bear that in mind. If you're gonna use accessories, it's gonna be very dependent on the mobile phone you use. If you use a smaller mobile phone and it has the 3.5 millimeter port on the top, then external microphones will work. You can of course put your external lens clips on and whatnot to get that fisheye effect. That should be fine with this thing. Now the stabilization I find to be very good. It turns out better than the Smooth C it's hard to really say. Looking at both of the footage that I've taken on the Smooth C and then on the Smooth Q here, to me both of them seem very similar. It's hard to distinguish which one is actually better. So stability wise, I would say they're really about the same there. But this one, you of course, you can plug in USB cable to this and charge your mobile phone, something you can't do on the Smooth C. So really this is I feel a decent gimbal and as you've seen with a mobile phone like the Mi Max here that doesn't have optical image stabilization, you can actually get some usable footage out of it walking, whereas if you didn't have this gimbal, that footage would be completely unusable there. Thanks a lot for watching this review and I do hope to see you back in the channel soon with more up and coming reviews. Bye for now.